Hi everybody. Now one of the biggest questions that I get when people bring home a new puppy is where should I start, right? What should I teach my puppy first? And I get it because there's a lot that our service dog puppies need to learn. There's the chewing and the biting and the coming when called and then there's the basic obedience and there's foundation for service work and tasks and all of that stuff. And so trying to figure out where to start can be really overwhelming, and I totally get that. So what we're going to talk about today is exactly how to choose which thing you should teach your puppy first. And I'm going to show you and talk to you and show videos of exactly what I started with when Leo first came to me, when I first picked Leo up, what we spent those first few days really working on. So before I get started, remember that our free puppy raising workshop is coming up. It's going to start on Monday and you can get all the details on that at the link in the description of this video. You can get access to the classroom, all the details on the workshop, as well as our free puppy training ebook, The First Seven Days, which has all kinds of puppy raising tips and tricks. It has like a journal of what Leo's first seven days with me looks like. It has a sample schedule. It has the puppy raising formula. It has all kinds of stuff in there. And you can get all of that at the link in the description of this video. So what we're talking about today, like I said, is how do you choose what to train first? Now in that workshop, we're going to cover foundation training in depth. But I actually start before I get into foundation training, I start with something else. And that is what does your puppy need to know in order to live in your house successfully? Okay, what are the first few things that your puppy needs to tackle in order for you both to have the least amount of stress and to move him into your home with as much success as possible. Now this, we're going to get into details because I know that even that can sound a little bit vague, right? And I'm going to give you examples and we're going to get into details. But the reason that I start here is because first and foremost, you have to be able to live with this puppy that you just brought home. Because if you can't live with him and you guys aren't building a relationship, you're never going to get to the service dog stuff, right? So we have to start with what are the things that your puppy needs to know in order to live in your home with your lifestyle. Now, this is going to look different for everybody. For example, I have a fence. So for me, walking on a leash and wearing a harness is normally not one of the first things I need to teach my puppies. Because when I bring a puppy home, we just go out into the backyard off a leash. So leash training isn't a huge priority for me. But if you live perhaps in an apartment or somewhere without a fence, then maybe leash training is a huge priority for you right? Maybe you have a cat and not chasing the cat is going to be your biggest priority. Maybe you have kids and so play biting is going to be your top priority. Okay, this is going to look a little bit different for everybody. So for Leo, what we did, what I did with Leo, right? Remember, so I drove, and if anybody doesn't know, I drove to Virginia. So I'm in Wisconsin. I drove to Virginia to pick up Leo, which meant our first couple of days together were spent traveling back from Virginia to Wisconsin. So the things that I needed him to know are a little bit different than if he had just moved straight into my house, right? So the first thing was crate training. And we're gonna, I'm gonna give you video examples of all of these here in a second. So the first thing was crate training. In order to travel and sleep, and, and sleep in a hotel room with this puppy, I really needed him to be comfortable in a crate. Okay, the second thing was play. Because we were traveling, I needed an easy way to give him an outlet for physical and mental, you know, physical and mental outlets, things to do, things to, to run. I needed to be able to wear him out easily which luckily with an eight week old puppy is usually pretty easy if we're being honest, right? They don't have a lot of energy at that age. Um, the third thing was wearing a harness. Again, we were traveling across the country. So I needed to be able to put him on a leash and a harness at rest areas to go for potty breaks, for all of that stuff at hotels. And then the last thing was I really needed to be able to pick him up. Now, for Leo, he hated being picked up. And I'm going to show you a video of this and you'll see, you can see him tense. Um, if we had been at home, maybe that would have gone down my list of priorities a little bit because we could have just walked outside. But traveling, I really needed to be able to pick him up and put him in the car or pick him up and carry him up a flight of stairs or carry him out of the hotel so that we didn't have an accident on the way down, right? I really needed to be able to pick him up and carry him. So let's go through all of these one at a time. So 
and again, this is going to look differently. Oops, I jumped the gun a little there. This is going to look different for everybody. These might not be your four things, but what I want you to do if you're bringing home a brand new puppy or if you have a brand new puppy is to think about what are those kind of top three, maybe four things that are going to make life with you as least stressful as possible, as successful as possible. So it might look similar to Leo's. For example, crate training is always my top priority with a puppy. Um, but like I said before, harness training isn't always a top priority. Sometimes we save that a week or two. Um, so crate training was the first one. This one, I really needed Leo to be able to sleep in a crate, uh, drive in the crate, be comfortable in the crate, right? So his first, oh, that's the wrong video. This is one. His first night, this is the thing that we did with his dinner was just, oops, Okay, I gotta move this bar or that's gonna keep happening. There we go. Um, I have a whole video on crate training puppies. I did this a few weeks ago. I will put the link to that video in the description of this video as well so that you can find that whole video that I did on crate training. So this is just a little snippet here, right? Where this is Leo's very first experience with this crate. He went in there because he wanted to play with the blanket because he, even as a puppy, he wanted to play with everything, right? And he's a lab, he likes to put everything in his mouth. Um, but his first session really was just getting comfortable going in and out, then getting comfortable with me closing the door. Um, this is what he did for his dinner that first night with me. Now, like I said, I have a full video walking you through all of his crate training, exactly how I crate train every puppy that comes to me. So I will put that link in the description of this video for anybody who has questions on crate training. Now, the second thing, like I said before, was play. I really needed Leo to learn how to play with me. Now, if you've been following me for a while, we've talked about this before. I might have even shown this video clip before, but that's okay. Um, is I am a huge fan of play. I think that toy play is underutilized in the service dog training world. And I think that it is an unbelievably valuable thing for you to start with your puppy right away. It's going to call, it's going to be a good physical outlet. It's going to be a good source of exercise. It's going to be a great relationship builder. It helps keep you really fun and exciting so that later on when your puppy is trying to decide between you and a distraction, you have more of a chance of holding up to that distraction. And it's really great for play biting. So 90% of what I do to teach a puppy not to play bite is just teaching them to play with toys, teaching them to love, love toys. And I have talked about play biting a little bit in the past, but if you guys want a full video on that, let me know if I haven't done that already. Um, okay, so then this was Leo's for, and I'm just gonna jump ahead just a little bit because the first bit was me getting settled. Um, this was also Leo's first night with me where we're just playing with toys. I'm teaching him right away to love playing with toys, to play with the toys instead of biting my hands, that this is how I like to be played with and look how much fun it is. So with a puppy, of course, I'm very gentle. We need to be very gentle with our tug. If you're gonna play tug of war, you need to be gentle. I love the game of tug of war. If you guys would like a full video on how to utilize toy play, let me know in the comments and I can certainly do a whole video on how to teach polite play, what the rules should be, how to do it safely. Um, but I really love toy play with my puppies. And so here what I'm trying to do is getting him to let go of the toy that was in my left hand and move over to that toy that I had moving. So this also teaches the foundation for a drop it so that he's learning to switch back and forth between the toys. So we played a lot um, the first couple weeks that he was with me and <laughs> really encouraged him not to do stuff like that, right? Take the toy away. Um, so then the next thing that we worked on was wearing a harness. So um, Leo and I were traveling. I needed to be able to hook him up. He came wearing a collar, so he was already comfortable wearing a collar. A lot of breeders do that. Um, and for me, and this is something that I go into, um, in our, this is something that I talk about in, I have it sitting next to me, a page from it, the, um, free puppy training ebook that I have the first seven days. I talk about this in there. We're also going to cover this more in depth in the workshop, but in my program, and my students can attest to this, I am a stickler for wearing a harness when we're not healing, okay? And if we're practicing healing, then we're wearing a collar. And so in my, with my dogs, the collar ends up being a cue that tells them you need to stay in heel position and not sniff and do all that stuff. And the harness is something that tells them, okay, now you're free to move away from me a little bit. You're free to sniff. You know, this is where you can be that polite pet dog. I talk about this a lot in the Freedom Walk video that I did. I talk about this a lot in our online academy. Um, and we're going to hit this again. Like I said, we're going to hit this in the workshop. And I talk about it in the free ebooks. If you have 
any more questions about why I do that collar versus harness thing. But first, I just needed Leo to be comfortable wearing a harness, right? So I have one of these um, Herda harnesses. Now, this is not a Y front harness. And if you guys have been following me a while, you know I really like the Y front harness. Um, but this is not a Y front because I, I have this in my home already. And it's perfect for puppies because I only have to slide it over his head and hook it under his stomach. So if I'm going to buy a harness specifically for a puppy, it will generally be one of these. And then once they get a little bit bigger, I'll switch them into the Y harness. So here I'm just giving Leo treats for allowing me to put the harness on um, and then for wearing the harness, right? So I'm just trying to build this positive association. Um, you can certainly formally shape this with a clicker and treats if you want to. I know lots of people who do. Um, and if he was worried about this at all, if he was showing um, nervous or stressed body language, so if he was going tense, if his tail stopped wagging, if he started to avoid me, I would have broken this down into much smaller pieces. So if you have a puppy who is actively nervous about the harness, you're going to want to break this into smaller pieces. And there are some great videos online on that. I can also do a video on that if that's something you guys are interested in. Um, but Leo, as you can see, is totally calm with me slipping this on and off his head. So I'm just using a little bit of a lure, you know, to lure his head through, give him some treats, clip the harness, give him some treats. So if you see there, though, he went a little bit still as I clipped it underneath his stomach. And then I'm going to encourage him to walk around. So once he's comfortable wearing the harness, then the next step is to just move around in a little bit. And I do that usually by tossing treats or luring them around just to kind of get them moving and wearing the harness at the same time. Um, so this was the third thing that Leo and I really, really needed to hit was wearing this harness so that I could you know, put him on a leash and a harness for short walks, for potty breaks, at rest areas, at the hotel, all of that stuff. We didn't, we didn't have a choice. And if you live in an apartment or a home without a fence, this is going to be one of your top priorities as well, making sure that your puppy is comfortable in a harness so that you aren't accidentally sabotaging your future healing training by allowing them to move more freely while wearing a collar. And like I said, um, if you have questions about that, let me know, but I'm going to cover that in the workshop. I cover, I talk about it in the free ebook. Um, so I have resources on that in the freedom walk video as well. So here, you know, we're just getting comfortable wearing the harness. Now, the fourth thing that we did was being picked up. Now, this was a struggle for Leo. He really, um, when I picked him up, he would go totally stiff. And then when he, I put him on the ground, he would stand there stiff, looking around like this and like breathing really heavy. Um, so he was really uncomfortable being picked up. And I needed to be able to pick him up and put him in the car, pick him up and take him out of the car, you know, all of that stuff. And by halfway through our second day together, he was avoiding me when I would reach for him because he didn't want to be picked up. But I don't want him to have a negative association with me, right? So that evening, this is our second evening together, um, and what I'm working on here is going to be that being picked up. So I'm going to start just by touching his stomach. I think I'm just moving him for the uh, video there, but touch his stomach give him a treat, touch his stomach, give him a treat. I'm trying to create a positive association with the pressure first around his rib cage and then slowly being picked up. And this is how I will handle a puppy who's nervous about any type of handling. So if he doesn't want his feet touched or he doesn't want his ears touched or he doesn't want to be picked up, I break it down into these small pieces, right? So first treat just for touching and then I'll start to do a little bit more and a little bit more. Um, but Leo really hated being picked up. And like I said, he was starting to avoid me. He was starting to actively avoid me. Um, and so we really had to tackle this. We also did some creative problem solving. So I actually started just taking his whole crate out of the car and letting him walk out and then put it, you know, letting him go in his crate and pick up the whole crate and put it in the car, um, so that I wouldn't have to pick him up. But of course, some puppies are going to be really uncomfortable with the movement of the crate. And then that wouldn't be an option. For Leo, luckily, he was fine with the movement of the crate, just not being picked up. So these were our four top things. Now, like I said, what your top things are, and I should figure out how to, there we go, how to take the video down. Um, these are our, these are the four top things that I really focused on. But for everybody, it's going to be a little bit different. So I'm just going to look at my notes here really quick. But it, so like I said, so. Um, any, it's going to be anything that you really need your top few priorities for your puppy living in your home. That could be comfort wearing the harness and leash, like for potty breaks, like Leo and I had to do. Um, it could be being, you know, being polite around your cat. It could be not jumping on your toddler or not play biting your toddler. 
um, you know, it's really going to depend on you. So of course, right away, we're working on good house training. We're working on good chewing habits, all that stuff. And I talk about all of that, how to use that puppy raising formula. And I actually have a video on that. I'll link to in the description of this video as well. Um, we start that puppy raising formula right away. We start reinforcing good behavior right away. But as far as formal training sessions are concerned, it's going to be those top few things that I need this puppy to learn in order to live in my home. And that's going to change based on it's going to change based on your individual puppy and what his natural strengths or natural you know discomforts are. And then it's going to change based on your lifestyle and your home. Now, if you guys have any questions about this, go ahead and throw them in the comments below. Let me know if you would like a video on play, on play biting, any of that stuff. Um, and don't forget to check out the link in the description of this video to get all the details on our upcoming free puppy raising workshop. You can get access to the classroom and the free ebook right at the link in the description of this video. And I will make sure to put in the other links that I talked about here, the crate training one, the puppy raising formula, and I'll throw the freedom walk one in there as well if you guys have questions about any of that stuff. And then if you have questions about anything else, of course, the best place to ask them is going to be in our free Facebook group, Train Your Service Dog with Confidence. So if you have any or if you like this video, if you found it helpful, make sure to hit that like button and then share it anywhere that you think other owner trainers are going to find it helpful. And I hope to see you inside our Facebook group and at our free workshop. So have a great day, guys.